Hey y'all, this lesson is on analyzing graphs and basically we're going to be looking at um, intervals at which graphs are increasing and decreasing and then we'll also take a look at domain and range and x-intercepts and relative minimums and maximums and, and all that good stuff. So if you have plans of ever going into something like calculus, this is going to be really helpful as you explore all of those concepts in calculus. But for algebra, it's also kind of useful because it tells us certain things about the graph. So we're going to talk mostly about increasing and decreasing functions. And if function is increasing, if it rises from left to right, so just like we read English, we go left to right. When you're looking at the graph, if it's going up, then it's increasing. And if it's falling down, it's decreasing. And then when we state the interval at which it's increasing or decreasing, we're focusing on the x values at which that's happening. So I have a couple examples here. We actually use these examples when we explore domain and range. But we can use these same examples to look at increasing and decreasing. In this first one, we are stating where it's decreasing, increasing, or constant. And I didn't talk about this, but constant means it's not going up or down, it's just staying the same. So in this one, if we're, um, we use this, basically reading from left to right, if, I'm, if I take my finger and I'm following the graph from left to right, if it's going down, it's decreasing. And then there's like a turning point. And when it goes up, it's increasing. And we'll talk about that turning point in a second. So if I start over here on the left and I track my finger down, I'm going down, 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 down. And then there's this turning point here. And then it goes up, 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 up. So this is going to be my decreasing. And this is going to be my increasing. And I just kind of abbreviated there. That's not my final solution. I, I do want to write that out correctly. It's decreasing on an interval. We're looking at the x values of negative 5 to negative 1. I think I use a parentheses there because when we talk about increasing, that's going to be our starting point. And our ending point is 3. So right here, that turning point, since we included in both sets, we're going to use that parentheses. And it also represents our turning point, which we actually call a relative minimum. We can also have a relative maximum. So our minimum is at negative one, zero. It is our lowest point on this part of the graph. And remember back from my interval notation video, uh, my reasoning behind the bracket was because it's a closed circle. And my reasoning behind the parentheses was because it is an open circle. So as we look at the next two examples, I want you to go ahead and try them, but I want you to keep in mind that maybe not every graph uh, decreases, increases, and has constant. So there may just be one, two, or both different scenarios here. So I want you to pause it and try these. And then once you try them, I want you to come back and check your answers. So this one has um, an obvious increase here because it's sloping up when we go left to right. So it starts here and it goes up to here and the corresponding X values are negative four to three with a bracket and it is increasing. The next one, we have several different scenarios here. Um, We've got this little piece represents 
negative infinity to negative one. And is this increasing, decreasing, or constant? This one's increasing. Because if I were to track it with my finger or this laser, it is going up, 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 up. And then in the next instance, instance, if I track my finger, it's not going up or down, it is staying constant. So it is constant on the interval of negative one to four, both parentheses because they're both open circles. And then the last piece is also increasing and it's increasing on an interval of four to infinity. And that's all. So down here, let's talk about minimums and maximums a little bit more. Um, we know now that they occur when that switch happens, when it goes from increasing, increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. When it switches from the two, then a maximum or a minimum occur. And we call it relative because in the case where, um, like let's say maybe it's a parabola, and we know that it's decreasing, 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 increasing, 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 that this is, mm, that's a bad example. Let's change that. Uh, I'm trying to think of a better example. <laughs> I don't know, but there's a, uh, I can't think of it. I had it in my mind, but it, it, it may not be the actual lowest point, but relative to the region that we're looking at is the it's um, lowest point in that region. So that's what I'm trying to explain, but I've drawn a, a terrible example. I'm sorry about that. Just pretend that never happened. All right, so a relative maximum is the value at a peak and a relative minimum is the value at a valley. So in the example where I had drawn like that, this is the relative minimum because it's at a valley. And this is the relative maximum because it's at a peak. And this is a, oh, 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 <laughs> it worked out, yay. Um, so this is a relative maximum and it's relative because this actually keeps going up further and further and further. So there are higher points on the graph. These are all higher, but relative to this piece here, this is the maximum. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> it worked out. It all works out. So there's that. We have increasing, decreasing, minimums, maximums, and this does tie into calculus if you are going to take that. So I have an example here, and we're going to look at a couple different things, which is really going to pull together all the stuff we've been learning in these last couple videos with domain and range, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, increasing, decreasing, maximum, minimum, all this stuff we're pulling together in this one problem. So it's so pretty. Uh, you can see this crazy graph here. It's a little bit wonky, but it's kind of fun for the sake of the lesson. So domain is associated with which variable? X. We are trying to state in the domain the possible X values. If we look here at our graph, this goes from negative infinity, we're still good, we're still good, all the way to positive infinity. So basically there were no breaks in the graph. There were no issues with the X's. So you would either say negative infinity to positive infinity, or you could say all real numbers. And that double backed R is the symbol for all real numbers. And then the range, we're looking at the possible Y values we can see that the Y starts here and then it goes up from there. So we would say two, three, four, negative four to positive infinity. Or you could say 
y is greater than or equal to four. Either one is okay. And that kind of ties back to that, ooh, I showed a box, like a shaded box of where the graph exists. And that box would start down here. So that's where I got that value. And then if I were to draw the box, it would go all the way to the top. And technically my graph stops as far as the paper goes, but this actually keeps going on forever. So that's why I did infinity. And then what are the X intercepts? There should be two. So you might pause it and try it. See if you can state those X intercepts. I would practice writing them as points. And if you've done that, you should get, uh, looks like they're kind of decimals here. We've got one right here at about 1.2 maybe. And then one again right here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about 6.9 or 6.8, not or. So if you got, if your decimals were a little different, that's fine. We're just kind of estimating here because I can't tell exactly where it is. Uh, but if they're close to those numbers, then you're good. I would assume that if you're doing homework with like um, software, like an online homework system, they're going to give you things that are a little more exact. So this was just kind of a weird example. And then the y-intercept, where does it cross the y-axis? Crosses once right here, one, two, three, four. And that is zero, four. And again, you wanna practice writing that as a point. Then we wanna know the interval at which f is increasing. And remember, f is just the name of the function. So you're looking at the graph and you're locating the x values at which the function is increasing. And then I also want you to do that for decreasing and constant. So if you need to pause it and come back, please do that. You might notice on mine that I have labeled the graph and that's going to help me write my interval. So if this, if you think that that would help you, I want to encourage you to do that. So I've gone to the graph and I've kind of located this turning point, which is the relative minimum. And then that turning point is kind of created by this decreasing and then switch to increasing. So what I did is I took my finger or your laser pencil or whatever, and you go constant, 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 constant. Here's a turning point, decreasing. Here's a turning point, increasing. So every time there's that turning point, that's going to be um, where it switches. So it is increasing from x equals one, two, three, four, it looks like, to infinity. It's decreasing from x equals zero to four. And it's constant from negative infinity to zero. And notice that I used parentheses on those because they are used in several different um, cases. And so we're not gonna be equal to zero basically or four. And then state the number at which f has a relative minimum. So we're actually, when it says that, we're stating the x value at which it has a minimum. Here's your graph again. Keep zooming out and in and out and in, sorry. <laughs> so the minimum is down here. That point is 4, 2, 3, 4. It looks like negative 4. 1, 2, 3, yeah. So the x value at which the minimum occurs is at four. It's that turning point. And then when it says state the relative minimum, that's where they're asking for the point at which it occurs. <laughs> Hopefully you can't hear my dog. He is demanding that I play with him. <laughs> Give me a second, Sergeant. 
All right, and then f of negative three. f of negative three means that we're evaluating the function at negative three. So when x is negative three, what is the y value? So we're going to locate negative three on the x-axis and see the corresponding y value looks like four. So I went over to negative three and it corresponds to this point, oops, which is negative three, four. So f of negative three is four. And then now this one's a little tricky. We're actually given the y value and we're trying to find the x value that's corresponding to it. So it says find the values of x for which f of x is negative two. And we know that f of x is another name for y. So we're gonna locate the point at which y is negative two and see which x value or x values corresponds to it. I'm going to erase what I've got here. Eh, I'll leave it. It's getting a little crowded, but it's okay. So when y is negative two, the corresponding graph is here, or the associated graph, which is at x equals two. So when x is two, y is negative two. So we're kind of going backwards on that one. So there's that picture. If you want to see the picture again, that's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know and I would be happy to help.